YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with a very early look at 2025 free agency. The best of the best. The top 10 upcoming free agents, in my opinion. Of course, things can change. Guys can sign extensions before then. We have you, we'll have you kept up to date with free agency content. We'll do some way too early fits, landing spots, things like that. Should be a lot of fun. I've been doing uh, position ranking, player rankings by position, top 32 on our Twitter. A lot of fun. More to come. A lot of people complaining that their favorite players aren't ranked one. Exciting times. My number one free agent for 2025, Justin Jefferson. I think a lot of you agree. Um only 24, and he's already easily the best receiver in football. Got to stay healthy this year, though. Uh, but arguably the best non-quarterback in football as well. I think a lot of people would agree on that. But it's hard to imagine. Hard to imagine the Vikings don't bring him back or keep him around, right? When you have a player that good. I think the only thing stopping that, uh, like a reunion or an extension, is... Uh, Maybe Jefferson declining all offers and testing, wanting to test free agency. So I think that's certainly possible. I think chances are the Vikings, you know, make sure they get him back. I think, you know, they don't. They're not in a rush right now. When it comes down to it, do they give him a blank check? Essentially, um, hard to overpay for a guy like this because I don't know if there is such thing as an is overpaying for a guy like Justin Jefferson. So we will see. Uh, but so far, no extension. Number two, I'm going to go with Jordan Love, which uh, you know. We want to see a little more, I guess, because early last year he was struggling a little bit. But then he was insane down the stretch. Like it looks like the Packers got another, yet another quarterback, three studs in a row. What are the chances of that? Um, hard to imagine him going elsewhere. I would think the Packers, when it comes down to it, you know, when when, it, when we get to that time, uh, they make sure they extend him. I think it'd be pretty big. Unless they extend him at any time before the season, which is possible, but I think it's going to be pretty big of how he plays this year. Um, you know, can he have a full season of how he kind of ended, minus that last play, but how he kind of ended uh, his stretch uh, down, you know, down the stretch of last season. So uh, he'll be my number two, though. You know, maybe there you'd argue uh, other quarterbacks we're about to we're about to talk about are a little better right now. I could definitely argue that, but love. Only 25, a future franchise quarterback with elite potential. Um, so I got to rank him number two here. Number three is another quarterback. He is a little older than Jordan Love, but Dak Prescott, I mean, is a proven, very solid quarterback. The only thing that really isn't proven yet is, you know, winning the big, big games in the playoffs. I, I think we all agree that he's it's it's in him like he's capable of it kind of just has to do it but that's kind of the only flaw right now the guy tears it up uh, for the most part especially in the regular season um you know so is it a Cowboys thing is it a Dak thing when it comes to the playoffs who knows uh but it's a really good quarterback that anyone would love to have uh, obviously there's a lot to his game uh, not like a one-dimensional type quarterback or a you know he's not gonna Cowboys have kind of switched things up too. He's not going to fit specific system I, I, systems. I think he could fit anybody. So it's like this one, you know, we think Jefferson will be back on the Vikings. We really think Love will be back on the Packers. This one is a little up in the air. The Cowboys are, you know, they traded for Trey Lance a year ago. Not that they think he's the guy, but they're sniffing around a little bit. You know, they, they really are. It kind of feels like that, um, you know, and they weren't really uh, – you know, trying to push to get an extension done, done with Dak. So he maybe he could be had next offseason. So that'll be pretty fun. You get a big-time quarterback here. Uh, so got to rank him number three. Number four, a lot of these guys are close, but I'm going to go with Tristan Wirfs, the Buccaneers star tackle, uh, who's only 25 years old currently. Uh, I love that he has experience at right and left, can play either at a high, high level. He's played at a high level every year so far in his young career. Uh, a lot of upside, elite tackle at any given time. It, you know, if you can get an elite tackle in free agency, I mean, that's huge. It, it, it's franchise changing. You know, maybe not as much as quarterback, but right there with it. So, got to rank him number four. Another one, it's kind of hard to imagine that the, the Bucks kind of let him go. But teams would be, I mean, teams are always desperate to get better on the offense line. Here you have a freaky good elite young offensive tackle that is, is I guess, versatile in either either uh, side of, of the ball there, um, for, uh, you know, in terms of the two tackle positions. So uh, Tristan Wirf's a big one. Uh, was kind of back and forth on four, five, and maybe six, on, you know, with the rankings. But another receiver, CeeDee Lamb, another cowboy. CeeDee Lamb, I'm going to rank him five. He's right there at Wirf's. So I was kind of back and forth. I just think, uh, 
you know, there, I guess there aren't very many lambs out there, but there's so many good receivers coming out of the draft every year. You could potentially, it's a little easier to find a guy like that than another Tristan Wirfs. Uh, but CD lamb was insane last year. So good. One of the very best offensive players. You know, I think, I think he should have been even more, you know, considered for offensive player of the year. So I was pretty high on him last year. Um, big time player can play in the slot, can play outside, can win with so many different ways, you know, from the receiver position. So uh, I, I think the Cowboys are more likely to see what you guys think in the comments. Who, who are the Cowboys more likely to bring back? If there was, if it was just one, of course they can bring back both. I don't see a world where neither come back, but I think Lamb is more likely to go back to the Cowboys just because the Cowboys, you know, interests uh, than than Dak Prescott. But they they perfect world. They get them both back. For the right price. But again, I think Lamb, they're more likely to just like, hey, we'll give you top tier receiver money. I think maybe guys like Jefferson and Lamb, they're kind of waiting to see who who gets paid what here. I think what St. Brown, what he just got paid, like he was about to be on this list, but he got paid a couple weeks ago by the Detroit Lions, an extension. Uh, phenomenal football player, best slot in, in football. Uh, he got paid an insane amount of money uh, and not insane in a, in a bad way. Um, deserving, so it kind of just even up the market a, a little bit more here for these guys. So maybe they're, you know, you think Jeff Jefferson gets paid more than Lamb, but maybe they kind of go off of what what each other gets paid or whoever for whoever gets paid first. So it should be pretty interesting. Uh, number six, I'm gonna go to a tongue of Iloa who could be in the mix for a higher ranking because he's only 26. This is a, he's a tricky one to rank. I think this season is gonna be big. Uh, I think people will be split on him. People may be a little disappointed in how he is in the big games or, you know, he hasn't had a fully healthy young career so far. Um, you know, maybe he got elevated by Mike McDaniel's system. Some people might think it's a system, but man, he's dealt with some injuries that could have ended his career, uh, early injuries that even if sometimes guys, you know, that are young suffer injuries that aren't as serious and, and they just can't really figure it out because they never really got that chance. Uh, to kind of get their feet wet, you know. So I think it's impressive what he's done. And he went from people kind of nearing calling him a bust to a pretty damn good quarterback. So could he take another step up this year? I certainly think it's possible. So I think there's a, there's a chance. I mean, this year's big. It, it, maybe he'll get an extension before then. But if he doesn't and he goes into the season and he plays even better, like he got even better, like – we're going to be talking him towards the very top of this list and the Dolphins are going to have to get him back. Or, you know, let's say, hopefully it doesn't happen, but let's say uh, he gets injured again, then his value really, really drops. Um, you know, so it's an intriguing one here. We'll see what the Dolphins do. with it. It's hard to imagine another one. Hard to imagine him playing for another team, but uh, I, I guess you never know. But he's uh, coming in at number uh, number six. What's the 26? He's 26. Number seven, Brandon Ayuk. There was, there was some there were some trade rumors around, you know, surrounding him recently. And I guess that could still happen at any given time, but it's kind of got a little quiet, kind of calmed down a little bit. Uh could be staying, but they have they have added some receivers. They added a couple receivers throughout the draft, including a first round pick, Ricky Pearsall. So could that mean, you know, a trade's coming. There's even been some talk about Debo getting traded instead of Ayuk. So we'll see. Their best receiver. Overall receiver, Brandon Ayuk, uh, you could argue maybe the best separator, most consistent separator of the 2023 season. So he's kind of just getting going. Only 26. He's a guy that if he doesn't get extended, um, or, you know, he could force his way out in a trade still at any time. Or he's a guy that just will really look to test free agency. I can definitely see it. So um, some of the other guys, it's kind of hard to see them not going back. We could see him. Maybe some people would say most likely he's going somewhere else. Definitely could say that. So I uh, should have some takers. He's a guy that's only getting better, a young receiver. Number eight, another receiver. Some, I mean, the receivers that we talked about in this video are ridiculously good. T. Higgins, and a, pretty close. I think some people would say Higgins is maybe better than Ayuk. I think it's pretty close. I, you know, the difference to me, slight, slight difference, um, is Ayuk is a little bit more consistent of a separator, but Higgins is an incredible contested catch artist. And Ayuk actually did showcase a little bit of that specifically in the NFC Championship game, but down the stretch. But Higgins is one of the very best at that in football. So that'll be their differences there. Um, but franchise tagged. It just you kind of get the feeling that the Bengals, yeah, we'll tag them because we want to keep them around for one more year because we have a chance at any given time as long as we're healthy to win the Super Bowl. So it makes sense. Let's tag them. Let's keep them around. One more year, and then 
Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to try to find a replacement. They draft Burton, which isn't really a same style of player, but uh, can play outside too, but they're, they're kind of looking. So I, it kind of feels like to me that it's a one more go here with T Higgins and then he could be going elsewhere. So like Ayuk, yeah, there's, there's a good shot here. He's only 25. Um, you know, people thought, you know, if he hit free agency this year, there was already people linking him with, you know, the Titans or the Patriots teams like that. Um, you know, but so that could be the case in another year. So we we were talking about him with our free agency content just this offseason. We're going to be doing again next year uh, with T. Higgins. Uh, number, the, these were like clear cut to me. The top eight, like I guess the order not necessarily, but they're, those were the guys. Like they were going to be in this video. Nine and ten, there's a, there's a list of guys that were up for debate in my own head. I was debating with myself to put in there. So a um, lot of good, lot of solid guys. Number nine, another Miami Dolphin. I'm going to go with Javon Holland. I mean, he's only 24 years old right now. He's already one of the rising stars of safety position, one of the better safeties in football. Um, the, the safety market is weird right now. It's well, it's not that weird once you understand it. The guys that are getting paid are guys that can. They're not a one-trick pony. They can do. They they're more than just a playmaker. Or they're more than just a consistent tackler. Or you know they're they're. They're, they're pretty versatile in their style of play. And the guys that, you know, they're really good players, but they're not getting as paid as, as much, you know, the value's kind of going down is just because, you know, they're really good at their their one thing, but that's kind of what they do. To me, Holland is more than a one-trick pony. He's a, he's a playmaking free safety in the back end, but he does a lot of different things. I mean, you can put him up in the box. I thought he did a little bit more of that in the, with the Brian when, when Brian Flores was the coach, but in the box, blitzing, but... There's a lot to his game, but it's crazy that he's only 24 and he's already one of the very best in football. Freak athlete, really good playmaker. Um, so I like him uh, as my number nine upcoming free agent. So the Dolphins, tough. They lost some guys uh, this this free agency. They had a they they actually added more than we thought they were going to add. They did pretty well with, with who they added, uh, but they had big big time free agents like you know just to name a couple. Christian Wilkins, the obvious obvious one. Robert Hunt. They lose those guys to big money. Um, so were they kind of looking ahead? I mean, they couldn't really do much. They, they were a little limited in cap space, but were they looking, looking ahead to this? Is it going to be a repeat? I don't imagine them losing Tua, but if they lost a guy like Holland, uh, that would be, that would be tough. That'd be pretty tough for them. So big season coming up for him. Um, yeah, so safety makes the list and number 10, I think is who is quite underrated is Trey Smith and his who he plays right next to Creed Humphrey, who's actually a bigger name. He's a he's scheduled to be a free agent as well. Maybe you would rank him up here. I look at center though, and where their values at, and I look at guard, um, just a little bit more valuable, a little bit more important. Um, Trey Smith, you know, a little underrated, obviously. You look at the guards that got paid. They got paid way more than we thought they we thought they were, even though they're really good guards. Robert Hunt, Jonah Jackson, Kevin Dotson, you know, these guys getting paid a ton. Damian Lewis, another one. To me, Trey Smith's better than all of them. I don't know. Maybe he can be a little more consistent, but in the upside that he has, I loved him out of Tennessee. I loved him the second I saw him play. He was a tackle um, you know, that had upside at guard. Um, he had a little bit of a health thing. That was the only question. I could not believe where the Chiefs stole him in the draft. And it's not a surprise that he is as good as he is. He's only 24 years old. Um, stud, absolute stud. The Chiefs, I mean, the reason they're winning for several reasons. Number one is they have the best player in football at the quarterback position, Patrick Mahomes. But that offensive line has kept him clean. That has been huge. I like Trey Smith. I look at where the guard market's going. I look at the guards that got paid this year. I think Trey Smith's better than all of them. I guess the only one you can argue maybe is Robert Hunt, but I, who I also like a lot. But So I'm going to rank Trey Smith in the top 10. We'll talk about more than just 10 free agents in different videos, but um, AJ Terrell, the Falcons corner, Ali McNeil. I love uh, the Lions defensive tackle, you know, very, very young. He's a guy I consider Kenny Clark's another one, the Packers defensive tackle. Um, you know, you got a bunch of defensive linemen. You got more receivers, uh, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, two Houston Texans, uh, that, that really stand out. But, um, we'll talk about a video. There's already fits that I like way too early fits. Usually do a pretty good job of those, even though they're a little early. Um, so there's other videos that, that we could get to Zach Martin, another guard. I mean, he's been one of the best guards for a long time. He's just, you know, 33 years old. So, you know, does he get a one or two year deal? Um, you know, we'll, you know, so it's free agents. It's not really the best guys right now all the time. You kind of factor in future, uh, the value of their position, the impact, everything like that. So um, it's kind of gets you excited, even though it's a long ways away. Uh, we still got the season. I'm still waiting on the season. So um, fun to talk 
talk about stuff like this uh, before the season hits. So, um, yeah, join us for all of our content, bunch of draft coverage. Um, you know, not not too late to look at the to watch those things. A lot of on Twitter, like a like I said, we're ranking players by position, top thirty two. It's a lot of fun, a lot of good debates in there. Uh, links pinned to comments for anything you're looking for, like that Twitter or our spo- our sponsors, GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Code Goat for a percentage off. That is gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.